Hey YouTube, Jay Kilroy here. It's uh, June the 3rd, and it's been two months since I posted a video. I'd like to apologize. Um, I'm going to post some content that I finished way back, which was the completion of the Bandsaw Vice Shoe uh, series. Um, I thought I'd already posted this stuff up, so um, getting old sucks. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm, the video you're getting ready to watch, I'm going to post, was completed about, I don't know, three and a half, four weeks, it was over a month ago, right? So, um, enjoy, and then, uh, at the end of this video, we're going to have a preview about some upcoming projects. So, uh, talk to you soon. Hey YouTube, Jay Kilroy here. Um, we're going to finish up the uh, Bandsaw Vice shoe, the add-on shoe for the Bandsaw Vice uh, in today's episode. Uh, we're not going to do it quite the way I thought I was going to do it. I uh, spent quite a bit of time grinding out a bit, a, a cutting bit to um, do the T-slots in the shaper only to find out that I should use a slightly longer piece of tool steel stock to grind it. And it's not long enough. It doesn't give me enough reach. And I'm going to go show you why here. And uh, then we'll talk about alternatives. Okay, here we are set up in the shaper. Here's my part. Here's my tool bit. See, there's the cutting edge right here. And you'll notice that the side of the clapper box is already hitting the workpiece and we're not in there and it needs to be a lot longer or I need a holder for this type of this is a 5 8 inch square piece of tool steel um, since my cut is vertical since I'm cutting straight down or I want to cut straight down the piece the clapper has to be in a vertical position because that's the direction that I want my uh, tool to travel and um, I don't have enough reach here really so we are going to resort to more conventional methods so back to the bench all right so I've got the workpiece um, here taken out of the shaper and um, we're going to cut the uh, t-slots on the drawing remember better drawings make better work pieces um, so we're going to use a conventional little gift from the master car man. This is a uh, conventional T-slot cutter. This is a uh, 810, number 810 uh, cutter, a Keo brand, half inch shank. The numbering scheme 810 means, uh, I believe it means uh, the number of Ten, eight is quarter inch thick, and ten is the number of quarters wide, or the number of uh, yeah, the number of uh, the number of eighths wide, number of eighths inches wide, and eight, I believe, is the number of sixteenths thick. So it's a quarter inch um, wide cut, and it is a inch and an eighth. Uh, diameter here. We'll check just to make sure. No, it's inch and a quarter diameter. So, inch and a quarter diameter uh, by eight uh, by quarter inch wide cut. So we're going to mount this up. Uh, we got to figure out how we're going to hold this in the big mill. We can use the big mill because it's got power feet, and I don't like cranking the handle. Um, and I got. Uh, to mount a, a, what's a relatively small tool in a mill that size, um, I've got a half inch um, end mill holder here. I also have a, um, uh, this is a TG75. Let me get the camera in closer. So this here is a conventional um, half-inch end mill holder, uh, 
net, uh, you know, 50 taper style. And this is a uh, a TG collet chuck, TG 75 size collet. Uh, the TG size collets are the well, it's a clipped in here. It's a single taper style. This is like the TG 100, TG 150s. TG meaning tremendous grip. Um, and um, the thing you have to consider here, make sure that's in view, is that I've got to have enough shank mounted into the end mill holder and then enough clearance to get down in here and get over a quarter of an inch. So with this uh, uh, holder here, that obviously wouldn't be a problem. Um, with the TG75 um, holder, uh, you start to see that if, if you get a good bit of shank, tool holder, tool shank in here, let me get this out of here. Um, with a bit of tool shank gripped in, you know, you get a pretty close, uh, you're getting pretty close. So we're going to use the old school uh, end mill holder here. I've got to go find a set screw. That set screw, it looks like I pirated it for some other use. Um, I would have preferred to use the, um, the collet chuck because uh, these cutters don't didn't come. This Keo cutter doesn't come with any um, set screw flat, uh, which is kind of surprising. So uh, you can grip it tighter with that TG75. So let me get a set screw and we'll mount it up in this holder, and then we'll go do a tool change in the mill. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll get the uh, workpiece mounted up, and we'll cut some T slots. All right. Well. We didn't end up doing either of those uh, tool holders. Um, I ended up using this ER40 collet chuck, which gives me enough room. Um, the set screw in that, that uh, old uh, half inch end mill holder was a fine pitch 716, which I didn't have sitting around. And, you know, I didn't want to make. So I moved on and um, got it an ER40 collet. Um, so we've got the cutter. Let me get let me get mounted here. Let me get the camera. Some put more rigid. rigid. Um, we've got the cutter mounted in the collet. We've got the collet tight, and by tight I mean you need to take a wrench and grab the ear here, and then get your collet wrench uh, and. You really need to hit down on it. The ER40 collet spec is 140 foot pounds, or thereabouts. Um, so we're getting ready to make the first cut. We're going to go down this side. Um, it's an inch and a quarter effective tool diameter. And uh, how many teeth on this thing? 15 teeth on there. So I'm going to go do my math and figure out what my uh, speeds and fees need to be. Be right back with you. Alright, I went and did my math. Um, I, I could have guessed on most of this stuff. Um, we're going to run uh, 216 RPM, which is the closest thing I have to um, an ideal of around 200. Give me around a 75 to 80 service seat per minute. And then we're just going to start the feed nice and slow, sneak on in. and. Uh, do this in two passes. I'm going to go quarter of an inch. So I'm going to move in now and move in here. I'm going to touch off on this back face just to get a zero. And then I'll come back out and I'll set my depth to cut.
know what? We're going to go back for our next pass, which should be to depth. We got that first side cut, and now we're going to get ready to cut this back side back here. Uh, we're going to do it the same way. Backside at least a little easier to see. cuts here. Let's check her out. That's what we're looking for. All right. Let's pull the uh, workpiece out of the machine here, get back over the workbench, and see what's left to do on our bandsaw by shoe. All right, we're going to cut the counterboards and the set screws. Um, just uh, six inch dimensions here, two inches and two inches. We're going to cut us a flat down here to uh, allow us to drill and tap for a um, uh, four or five sixteenths set screw. We got a, a four flute um, half inch carbide end mill. We're going to run a little uh, mist here and um, we're running about 1,000 RPM, and we're just—I've got a little depth stop set. 
just going to uh, center cut on down and uh, clean up and then move over two inches and do the same thing. We got our two flats here cut. I'm going to go ahead and uh, knee on down and swap in the drill chuck. And we're going to drill and tap for that um, 5 16 set screw. Saw vice shoe finally completed. Sorry it took so long. Sorry I had to cut it up into so many shorter videos. Um, but slides right on. It's got a nice fit. Got these two set screws that will uh, clamp it to the vice body. Another big upside to this uh, design is I can just flip it over uh, instead of using some other type of clamp mechanism. I can just flip it over and run over the other side if I need to because I can move the vise to the other side of the saw. The saw does miter. So anyway, I've deburred it. Um, I've uh, cleaned it up here, but i got to tell you, uh, for those of you that were looking for some shaper action, Never fear, um, your desires are about to be answered. Uh, I want to clean up the actual clamping face. This is the wall. some of that sweet shaper action that everybody enjoys so much and so do I.
face cleaned up on the shaper. We're going to reassemble the vise here. Drop this baby back in the machine and see what she looks like. This is the uh, set screw that holds the uh, factory vise shoe, I guess you could call it, on. I had to replace that set screw with a shorter one because that was a really long set screw and stuff like that. Here's our add-on vice shoe. There we go. There we go. Um, honestly, I think the uh, the set screws are probably uh, not necessary. Uh, when the vise is in use, this is all sitting on the, the uh, saw table. So this would just sit down on the saw table and when you apply pressure uh, with the uh, clamping mechanism, it would be um, obviously held quite tightly uh, between the uh, vise and the workpiece. But, uh, you know, there's no kill like overkill, right? So. Let's move it over to the saw and see what she looks like in place. Alrighty. Here she is mounted in the vise. Uh, mounted in the saw and I think it's going to um, serve its purpose quite nicely as far as allowing me to get the clamp right up next to the blade without the um, mechanism the blade support mechanism or the blade itself uh, hitting the clamping mechanism which is if you look closely has happened before so uh, this is specifically made for some short pieces that um, you know I don't have a lot of length to clamp on I think this is going to work just fine. So, there we go. Project complete. Uh, so, there you go. Project is complete. Um, all the drawings are available. Links down below to Dropbox. Um, and uh, I think the next project we're going to work on here a little bit is um, I've got a box full of parts for a taper attachment for my little vest. We're going to have to go through that, kind of do an inventory, see what we got, uh, see what we don't have, and um, uh, go on about making the taper attachment functional on the lathe. So that's probably going to be an uh, extended uh, project. Uh, got some other little things going on around. Um, I'll try to record a few more. I've been real busy with work. Um, reach out to uh, my friend Adam Booth down in Florida. Uh, I know how you feel, buddy. Been running ragged. And uh, don't let it have a negative impact on your health. That goes for everybody out there. Uh, you know when you're getting tired. You know when you're getting run down. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Be healthy. Um, that's the uh, number one thing you, you know, do every day as far as uh, your, your work. Anyway. Um, it's raining like mad dogs. We've had about three inches over the past 24 hours, so uh, I got plenty to do. See y'all later. All right, YouTube, there you go. The bandsaw vice shoe is complete. I've actually used it several times since um, I completed the project well over a month ago and failed to post that content. Um, as I hinted in the uh, video, um, I've got this box of parts for a uh, taper attachment. Kind of heavy. Uh, for my rivet. And um, these things don't grow on trees.
that's it. So anyway, here you go. You got a bunch of parts for a uh, taper attachment for my Revit uh, 1020F. Um, not really easy to track these down, right? Um, I don't have uh, any. I've uh, had these for a while. I haven't done anything with them. And um, so now it's time to put them to use. So that's going to be the next video. You're going to see us doing this. Uh, plus, hold on just a second. These right here are two raw castings for face plates that I had done quite some time ago. Um, this one I had actually started machining on, but I had never completed. This one I never even started machining on. Um, but they were both for the Revet as well. Um, I had these castings done, and then, uh, which means I, I made the patterns for them. There's two different castings. Um, and then I got a uh, D13 faceplate off of a uh, Monarch 10 double E. So there you go. Uh, there you go. Anyway, uh, shop cat. So that's another a couple of projects that are coming up here soon. Um, the taper attachment is going to probably be an ongoing kind of project. Might have to make a new um, crossfire lead screw for the lathe. We have to see what we need. Don't really, I mean, I really haven't looked into it at all. And uh, on these two here, uh, we're going to have to lay out, drill and tap, and uh, basically implement uh, D13. Uh, spindle mounts on both of these. So um, that's that's coming up too. And then obviously cut the uh, uh, face and cut T slots or whatever kind of attachment mechanism we can dream up on these two. Uh, here. And uh, we'll go from there. So. Um, I don't plan on uh, hopefully having any more two months uh, hiatus. I have been really enjoying the videos by uh, Tom Lipton, Ox Tools, um, and uh, Adam Booth. Uh, as always, uh, very much enjoying those videos. Um, and uh, just glad to be back online and participating in the conversation. So you guys have a good evening. And uh, we'll be back in the shop soon. Thank you.